They can have it. They can't have this printing. That's Jim Miller's. He bought the printing dies. They're his, exclusively his. Uh, and he paid a he paid a pretty buck for those printing dies. I'm sure. Three grand. I'm sorry. Jim Miller, you know he paid for those printing dies. Three grand probably. Probably. Yeah, about three thousand dollars for those printing dies. Those uh, brand new pallets? Yep. Brand new and seven board tops. There's only gaps in the boards about that big. It's not a, it's, it eliminated all the setup at their plant. I was at uh, Schaefer Lake and he took me out in the plant and he showed me a balcony, a mezzanine. He said, look at that, Terry, the lights aren't even on up there. He said, I used to have people up there just setting up peach boxes like crazy. He said, I don't even need to worry about people anymore. They come in this door, I load them and they go out that door. So it's a, it's a new approach to a packaging system. It's a system, not just a box. It's the total package. And uh, with the tie sheets, there was no netting. Actually, talking to the Grambling brothers down in, in South Carolina, the netting that they put around that one pack you saw costs just a shade more than the tie sheets do. And the tie sheets delivers a much better load. So that was a wash. And he doesn't have the labor of somebody wrapping it. And it all comes together. So uh, it's, a, it's a new approach for a packaging company to supply boxes already made up, ready to load. It works for produce. It might not work for industry, but it works for produce packers. Transportation method, naturally, you have to consider how you're going to ship it. Air, truck, uh, but more importantly, truck load or LTL, mixed loads. If you've got a dry box, if you've got a peach box, which is a dry box, not cascaded, and you happen to be shipping that on the same mixed load with cabbage, which is going to be top iced, your peach boxes are going to get top iced right along with it. I can tell you that. I've seen it happen. The common carry, the independent trucker in Florida, he'll stop at one place and pick up sweet corn, one place pick up tomatoes, one place something else. And if there's a dry pack on there, there won't be anything left of it when it gets to market because he comes in and he just top ices the whole load. And uh, so you need to know. Is, is my product, is my great new idea going to be shipped in mixed loads? And what's that mixed load going to consist of? So you may be forced to have a non-dry box, a cascaded box, even though your product itself might not need it. The receiving point, you need to consider the terminal market, the stacking, the major chain warehouse, basically have racking systems today. So ideally, you need to be on a 40 by 48 pallet. And retail direct, your smaller independents, what do they have in the way of handling equipment? Are they going to have to manhandle each package? Here's Spartan warehouses in Grand Rapids. They have high rise rack storage. And this happens to be our peach box being tucked up in the pigeonholes of that rack on a 40 by 48 pallet. You can see other ones in the background stacked way up there. Now, if you've got a load that starts collapsing and it's up uh, five bays up and starts falling on the guy that's driving the fork truck down below, it's not too healthy. Here's a load that I've photographed in the L.A. market. Now, these boxes, this was an attempt at corrugated for grapes. These boxes probably were shipped 200 miles, and now the L.A. terminal market didn't have racks, but they wanted to double stack, and this is what happens. Didn't work very well. Marketing requirements are an issue that needs to be concerned. The package size, what's the market want in a package size? Are you going to have to have prepacks? Are you going to have to have this with prepacks inside? And prepacks are becoming a big, trendy thing. And how about graphics? And Steve's going to cover all that for you. End user, last but certainly not least, is the consumer. The convenience of your package, how is it opened, how is it reclosed, how is it going to be used? Is it uh, unloaded and your produce put in the uh, produce department without a package around it, is it pre-packed? Do you need to do any special things to it in pre-packing so the retailer can put it right on his shelf? The quality appearance, I heard that today a couple of times, very important, the product appearance, package appearance relates to the quality product inside. And last but not least is the value. The consumer wants value, not necessarily price, that's certainly a concern. But I know myself and my wife will pay more for that produce if it looks good and it looks like I'm getting quality for my money. So, very important. Okay, having covered all those issues, try and, is my hour up yet, Steve? In the product development, you've got a great new idea, you've covered all the issues, 
you have the opportunity, but you better make sure it's market driven. Because you can have all those other great things, neat ideas. Gosh, it'd be nice to have a package like this. But if it's not market driven, if, you, if your market doesn't really perceive it to be that, you're not going to have a successful product. You may have a neat idea, but it won't be a successful product. But if you get those two things going, if you've got the opportunity and it is market driven, the market wants what you have, you're going to have a product success. Here's a little statistics on a national product development type thing. Now this includes everything, not just produce packaging, but this is everything, everything that's packaged. 86% will fail before they ever reach the market. While they're still in development, they'll fail. They'll never make it to market. Of the remaining 14%, 40% of those will fail when they're introduced in the market. What's that say? About one out of every 12 is the market success of all the new product development ideas. So you can see why I get depressed in my job. <laughs> it's worse than going to Las Vegas. No, it's not really. But you can, you can better those odds with proper planning. Here's the steps that we go through in developing a new package for whatever, but basically this will cover produce. And I'm gonna run through these real quick and then I'm gonna run you through, walk you through an actual product development and show you that we did in fact cover these steps and it was a success. Study the issues we just talked about. You're then ready to come up with a concept. In my case, I do some sketching, get some concept work done based on what now I know about the issue, size, volume, what it has to do in stacking. Build some prototypes. I know what my stack constraints gotta be, I can plug that in and I can develop a package that's gonna meet those requirements. Do some laboratory tests to prove that my estimates are correct as far as stacking and what it's gonna, whether it's gonna survive the handling. Then I'm ready to do some field testing to fur further prove it. And it's very important you do field testing. Pack, ship, ship to the end user and observe the end user, get his comments. Not just pack out a box and put it on a truck and call up later and say, how'd it arrive? The guy says, it didn't. In the project, that won't tell you anything. You can't come back and redo that. You don't know what failed. It failed, but you don't know why. So field testing is very important. Success, failure analysis. If I have a failure in a field test, it doesn't blow my mind. If I get a chance to analyze why it failed, I generally can correct it. Failure is not bad. It may mean you were very close to having just the right package. On the other hand, if you have a success, you ship something out and you call the guy and the guy says, hey, it was great, I love it, start shipping that way. You may be overpacked. You can evaluate sex successful shipments, test shipments, as well as failures. Did you go back and say, gee, I did have too much. You know, it, it, it didn't fit all the issues that I thought I had. Therefore, I can cut my package down maybe, liner weights, whatever. I can reduce my cost and still have it work. All that failure means is you got maybe awful close to it and didn't quite make it. So what you do then, you, you redesign, if you will, or re refigure your figures on a compression, whatever the failure was. You do another field test. Generally, that is successful. You've You've done your homework and you can almost rely on being successful. Now you're ready for market introduction and then follow up. I like to follow up anything we put in a new market in a way of a package, the cabbage, the peach, for a year afterwards. And that means I'll go visit the retail store where that package ends up. I'll go visit the packer. I'll go visit the guy in the field packing it. Has he got any problem with it? What we end up with is a package that everyone's happy with and that's easy for us to sell. So, walk you through this project real quick. 1985, first of all, ideas are not one guy's idea. I mean, I don't have a corner on the market on ideas. All of you have ideas from time to time about ways something ought to be packaged. Your wives, girlfriends, kids, stock boy in the store, listen to them. Listen to what they're saying. Maybe the greatest idea in the world. Some stock boy is, might be bitching about something. Great idea if you can take that and turn it around into an opportunity. That's what it's all about. No one has a corner on, on ideas. Senior VP from our company was on vacation with his family out in California. He's driving through San Joaquin Valley, through the vineyards, and he knows wood crates stacked at the end of each row of, of the vineyard. Got back from vacation, he called me, he says, Terry, is there something we can do in corrugated? Looks like a great market out there. I said, gee, I don't know, let's take a look. Made a few phone calls, found out some very bare essentials. And we developed a plan, an objective, and talking about bare essentials here. 
Our objective was to develop a patentable grape lug, grape lug design which meets all user marker requirements. We don't know what those are at this point, but we know it has to meet those, including, and this is the only thing we did know, long-term storage, five months, received that from a phone call, and coast-to-coast -coast shipment after storage. That in itself might make you enough to say there's no, nothing we can do with corrugated. But we went ahead and we studied it. We looked, I went out to California and spent some time out there investigating this. And we found that besides wood, there was two other current offerings at that time. The wood is a TKV. What he saw was a TKV. It has wood ends and a crab veneer wrap around it. And we found that was very successful and it was obviously the one for us to beat if we were gonna enter that market. EPS, expanded polystyrene, molded styrene. is a body and lid, it's very attractive. It's a cocoon type package. However, it's used primarily for export and it really didn't interest us in the market we were after. And there was corrugated being used already. Uh, I found uh, various styles from eight different vendors while I was out there. And it was used primarily for the early grapes in the desert in the Palm Springs area where they pick, pack, and ship. They'll pick them, bring them into forced air cooling, get the field heat out, and load them on a reefer, and they're gone. They don't store. Even in that situation, the corrugated was not very successful. They experienced a lot of damage on the East Coast. So we decided that uh, we probably had an opportunity to get the desert grapes, but we still wanted to go after TKV. The corrugated desert grapes amounted to about 11 million containers. And uh, if you got the wood, you added another 44 million containers to that. So the big market was in wood. Interesting enough, I visited the LA market while I was out there and sure enough, they, there they were. Styrofoam, corrugated, and wood, right down the line. Now, you don't have to be an expert on the grapes. Which one would you buy? I'd buy the styrofoam. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Grapes look like they're full, like I got a full pack. They're bulging out the top of the pack. The corrugated, it looks like I'm being cheated, first of all, on weight in the terminal market. They dropped two inches by the looks of it. The wood looks okay, but the corrugated is the bad one. Talk to growers and wholesale market, and this is not all of them, but talk to people like Earl Cooper, director of purchasing at Tentacle West, that's now Dole uh, Corporation. Talk to director of fresh fruit marketing and the vice president of packaging operations, visited the packing houses, visited the field, visited with the guys that were speaking Spanish and I couldn't understand what they're saying but they got their point across what they liked and dis didn't like about packaging. But basically, they had a positive attitude towards corrugated. The wholesale market was a different case. I visited California Fruit, American Produce, and Jumeirah, and uh, there was no doubt about their comments. They hated corrugated with a passion. In fact, uh, they were about ready to throw me out when they found out I was from a corrugated company. But when they also found out I really wasn't trying to sell them anything, I was just investigating the possibility of developing a package, they did give me a lot of good information about packaging of grapes. We interviewed retail markets, end user, big chains, small independents, and this is basically the feedback we got from all of them. They preferred corrugated. Amazingly, they preferred corrugated, but they didn't like the way it arrived. They had to break up the wood before they could put it in the uh, dumpster to take to the landfill. They couldn't just throw the box in and create a void in the landfill. So the guy running the dumpster made them break it up. They'd stand in the back room and kick the slats out of it and throw it in the dumpster. The corrugated is more attractive than the wood. They realized that from getting other corrugated packages in. They preferred the corrugated for easy opening, no splinters, no broken boards. And most of your large change had a company policy. They wouldn't let the product be displayed in the wood lug because of the splinters and the nails from a liability standpoint. So they had a policy that they couldn't put that wood crate out on display. And they realized that corrugated would display better. The current corrugated, very quickly, easy disposal weight, interlocks, machine setup cost, no paper liner required. However, the disadvantages outweighed the advantages. Had a, it was poor stacking, didn't have a full look. Product arrived in poor to moderate condition, not acceptable by the wholesale market at all, the terminals, and it was unsuccessful in long-term storage. <clears throat> Here's an example of the, uh, that in 85 of the current corrugated package for grapes. This was in the LA terminal market again. Just a disaster, all kinds of damage. Um, you could have grape juice running out of the bottom of the package, just bad. 
after seeing that, I can understand why they want to throw me out. Uh, the current TKV, excellent stacking, full look, ships well, machinability, even though being slow, machine setup. Cost was a disadvantage. Weight, they're shipping package rather than product because it weighs more. And they'd rather be shipping grapes that they can sell. Difficult disposable, didn't have an interlocking future for stacking, needed a paper liner. Paper liner, by the way, cost 13 cents at that time. And it wasn't very attractive. Here's your TKV. This has not left the cooler in California yet, and you see the sides opened up on it where some fork truck or it slid alongside of another one or something. Uh, they're going to have to take that back and restack it. So our product requirements were these. Um, 23 pounds, long-term storage, course to course shipment, full look after shipment, attractive, easy, positive open and recloser. This is just basically the same package as this. And the great people want to be able to open and close this a dozen times and still have it be a snap lock. This sample's been around my office for a long time. It's still working. Um, ventilation, cooling, I described a little bit of that before. Machine setup, yes, it is machine setup, about 25 a minute. Uh, easy disposal, it does stack 30 cases high, 23 pounds per case. It is less expensive.